Hey guys, it's Cole Manus here, Guilford County Livestock Agent. Today we're going to talk about beef breeds of cattle. Um, I'm going to cover just a few of the the major breeds that we um, that you'll see here in the United States. Um, you can see find most of these in in North Carolina as well. Um, we're going to start off with the British breeds or breeds that um, originated from you know, England, Scotland, um, European, um, I guess it would be Western European area. Um, so the first we're going to talk about is the Shorthorn. So the Shorthorn was the first British breed to be brought to the United States. They are usually red, white, or roan colored. The um, Heifer or cow pictured is what we what we would call roan, um, and roan is just um, a term for like a patterned um, coat color, where they're just kind of spotted and and you know the colors are mixed up. Um, shorthorns, most shorthorns you'll find today are either going to be split into beef shorthorns or milking shorthorns. Um, there aren't as many milking shorthorns as there are beef shorthorns this day and time. Um, shorthorns are known for being a little bit larger framed. Um, you'll see a lot of shorthorning in what we call club calf genetics or, um, you know, show steers and things like that. Um, they usually, they're colder, colder weather cattle. They like they like it a little bit cooler. They get you know a little more hairy, um, and so they don't do as good further south. You go. The next one we're going to talk about is the Hereford. So Hereford is also one of the first breeds to be to be brought to be brought to the U.S. Not from the U.S. Um, but the Hereford is. They're well known for their distinct red with white faces and then white markings on their underline and oftentimes their legs as well. Herefords became extremely popular early on um, after they were brought to the United States because of their, their hardiness. They're very hardy cattle um, and they, people really took to that. They performed really well in a, extreme variety of situations hot cold it didn't matter they're well known for their um, easy fleshing ability so they they fatten up very easily um, and so that made made it easy to to feed them out and to get a quality carcass out of them um, herefords is probably herefords are probably one of the um, top three breeds in the United States as far as numbers go. Um, they're very popular in, in cross um, cross breeding. Um, you'll see a lot what we call black baldies of the Angus and Hereford cross, um, as well as crossing with um, exotic breeds such as Brahman. The third breed we're going to talk about is the Angus. So the Angus is the most popular breed in the United States. They were brought to the United States in the late 1800s. Um, the breed was developed in Scotland and are renowned, renowned for their carcass quality, their efficiency, and their calving ease. So they're solid black in color with the only white allowed behind the navel on the underline, and that's for registered cattle. Um, commercial cattle can be whatever you want, but. Um, Angus are very popular because they, they're really thrifty. They thrive in a variety of situations. They have, like I said, great carcasses, and they were the most well-known um, for their calving ease in particular and their highly, highly marbled beef. So that marbling is the fat inside of the, inside of the meat. So um, they definitely produce a a great carcass and they have good growth and very maternal instincts. As you'll find in most of the British cattle, they're very maternal. So the last British breed we're gonna talk about is kind of a sub, a sub leg off of Angus. So in the United States, we 
um, they consider Angus black only. So Red Angus created the own breed in other countries and all over the world. Angus, Angus can be black and red, it doesn't matter, but only in the US do we separate the two. Um, so the Red Angus were barred from the US Angus handbook because of their recessive red color. Um, they are solid red with the only white allowed behind the navel and the underline, just like Angus and registered cattle. They're revered for their docility, their carcass traits, their efficiency and calving ease. Much like Angus, they're very, very similar. I mean, they're exactly alike for the most part, other than the breeds have been separated in the U.S. by different um, associations that push them in different directions. So there are a few differences, and you'll see um, some different compositions of, of cattle between the two, but for the most part, they're exactly the same other than the coat color. Rangs became has become really popular in this run in the numbers as far as registrations in this country. Um, they seem to perform better in, in in the south where the heat is an issue, um, but they also can perform just as well in the cold. Um, the Canadians are, are very fond of red Angus, um, so you'll see a lot of red Angus the further you go north as well. So the next one we're going to talk about, the next breeds we're going to talk about are what we call the continental breeds. So these breeds were from like the southern European area, um, and that most of these breeds are larger framed um, for larger quantities of beef. The first one we're going to talk about is Simmental. So Simmental are larger framed cattle bred from these of beef. They're really colored with white markings all over their body, um, but now they're mostly black or red with a white blaze on their head, um, and they may have a little bit of white on their under on their legs, it, it really depends. Their coat color is not as determined as some of our British breeds are. Simmentals make up a large portion of our registrations here in the United States as well. They were brought here to increase the 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 size of the subprimals or the so they're they're much larger, heavier muscled. Um, larger framed, heavier muscle than, than our British breeds. Um, a lot of that has changed up until now. Um, they have bred them to be a lot smaller in frames, but they're still a heavier muscled um, cattle. That can also um, produce a quality carcass as well. The next we're going to talk about is Charlotte. So Charlotte's are Larger frame cattle from France with heavy muscling. They're completely weak color and mostly used in crossbreeding systems for a higher rate of gain. Um, Charlais are were extreme are extremely popular. Like I said, for crossbreeding systems, you'll see a lot of you'll see a lot of um, crosses with Angus and Red Angus and even Hereford. Um, just to get a little bit larger, heavier, fast growing calf with larger muscling. And that's really what they're the most popular for. So limousine is the third continental breed we're gonna talk about. Limousine are large frame cattle from France, originally bred as draft animals with heavy muscling. They can be black or red in color, and there's no distinction between the two in the limousine breed. They're usually defined, as you can see in this picture of this heifer, usually defined by the kind of the rounded, um, the rounded rump you see at, at the tail head. It's very kind of a rounded hip design. That's, that's usually a very good indicator of um, that you're looking at limousine cattle. They're also very good performers. They're just, they were just a little bit larger framed and They've bred a lot of that out to the modern day limousine. They're not as big framed as they were. And so they brought them down and made them a little more efficient um, and made them a little more maternal. 
The last breed we're gonna talk about is the exotic breed. So the exotic breed, the only one I'm gonna cover here, which is the most important and the most well-known is, is the Brahmin. So originally from India, they're bred with resistance to insects and heat tolerance. Um, they can be gray or red colored, lean carcass traits, and they take longer to mature. So Brahmin cattle, you, you'll you see a majority of these in places like South America, Mexico, places where it's very hot, um, lots of insect pressure. And they also, you'll also find a lot of them in southern the southern United States as we get into Texas and Florida, Louisiana, places like that, you'll find a lot more of the Brahmin breed and Brahmin crosses. They work well in crosses with British or continental breeds. Like I said, they're they're more of a, they're more lean, so they don't have as much fat in them, and so that makes them a little bit more makes them it makes it where they work well in crosses with some of our British breeds that fatten up really well. So that's all I'm going to cover today. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. And if you want to learn more and I, maybe we can dig a little deeper, let us know and we'll see what we can do.